hydrogen, this oxygen, this hydrogen, this one would be right up next to the oxygen, whereas this one would be a little bit closer to the hydrogen, okay? So, hey, even though both of these are pulling electrons away from the hydrogen, this one is a lot closer, so it has a lot more effect, okay? So when you look at inductive effects, you not only want to look at if these two atoms are different, okay, you also want to look at their position, how close they are to that hydrogen. The closer they are to the hydrogen, the more effect they're going to have, the more acidic that hydrogen is going to be. Okay, so if you don't believe me that the closer the electronegative atom, the more effect it's going to have, then do me a favor and go home and do this experiment on your own, okay? Go grab four of your roommates. I would do this right now except I don't have enough people. So, hey, go home, grab like four of your roommates and line up in a straight line. Let me diagram this out for you, okay? So, hey, go home, get five people. One, two, three, four five people line them up in a straight line like this and everybody hold hands. So outstretch your arms like this and hold hands, okay? What you're gonna do, you're gonna run three trials. I'll tell you what you're gonna do in each of these trials in just a second. But before you do that, you're gonna have this guy on the end. Tell this guy to say, or tell this guy to feel when he is being pulled the hardest. In trial one, trial two, or trial three. So in trial one, what I want you guys to do is have this guy. Have this guy on the end, let me draw him in green. Have him pull this line of people this direction, okay? Then in trial two, you're gonna have, let me draw this guy, let's say in blue. Have this guy in the middle pull on this line this way. And then in the third and final trial, let me draw this guy, I guess he'll, he'll just be in black, I don't have another color, but have this guy now pull on this line this way, okay? And at the end of these three trials, ask this guy in red when he was being pulled the hardest. When this guy on the end was pulling, when this guy in the middle, or the guy right next to him was pulling, okay? And hey, I guarantee, unless this guy is an extreme weakling, okay, then this guy is going to tell, or he's going to say that he was being pulled hardest in trial three where this guy was right next to him, okay? Because the closer you are, the more effect you're gonna have. This guy is gonna have more effect than this guy, is gonna have more effect than this guy, is gonna have more effect than this guy, okay? So hey, go home and try that and uh, see what you get, okay? Okay, so that was the first three stabilizing factors, you guys. Let's go on to the fourth one now. So let me just erase this real quick. Okay, so remember real quick, you guys, if you're, if you're confused why we're talking about stabilizing things, why we're talking about stabilizing factors right now, remember, each one of these, if you increase size, increase electronegativity, increase inductive effects, this all increases the stability of the conjugate base, right? And the more stable the conjugate base, the stronger the acid is, right? Okay, so hey, just if you lost track of what we're doing, increase, we're increasing the stability of the conjugate base because that increases the acidity of the acid, okay? So, the fourth stabilizing factor, you guys, is called hybridization, 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 okay? And if you remember back in the beginning of this, uh, this quarter when we were talking about hybridization like sp, sp2, sp3, then we said that sp is more electronegative than sp2, is more electronegative than sp3, okay? What this means is, is that if you compare a hydrogen that's part of a triple bond versus a hydrogen that's part of a double bond versus a hydrogen that's part of just a straight single bond. Which one of these hydrogens is going to be the easiest to fall off? A hydrogen on a triple bond, a double bond, or all single bonds? Well, I'm telling you that sp is more electronegative than sp2 is more electronegative than sp3. This is saying that, hey, this carbon right here, who's part of this triple bond, he's sp. This carbon right here, he's sp, meaning he is going to be pulling electrons. He's going to be more electronegative than someone who's sp2, than someone who's sp3. So the question is, which one of these carbons is pulling harder on those electrons away from the hydrogen, making it easier for that hydrogen to fall off? This sp, this sp2, or sp3, this sp3? 
this guy right here, right? Because SP is more electronegative than SP2 is more electronegative than SP3. So if you wanted to uh, imagine this, this, the electrons in this bond would be closer to the carbon than this one would be closer to the carbon than this one, okay? So, hey, it's easiest for the hydrogen to fall off of an SP, then SP2, then SP3, okay? So it's pretty pretty straightforward, this one, you guys. It's just talking about electronegativity. SP is more electronegative than SP2, is more electronegative than SP3. If you have a hydrogen on one of those, then hey, SP is easiest, SP2 is the next, SP3 is the uh, third easiest to fall off, okay? Okay, so the fifth stabilizing factor very, very important, is going to be resonance. And you've all heard this before. And hey, you guys, the more resonance structures you have, the more or less stable you are. The more stable you are, right? Increase your resonance, increase your stability. So guess what? The more resonance structures your conjugate base has, the more acidic that acid is going to be, okay? Let's see how this works. All right, so let's take these two compounds for example. CH3, CH2, 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 OH, okay? Let's compare this to CH3, CH2, CH2, C double bonded to an O, OH, okay? So the hydrogen in question is again going to be this one next to the oxygen, okay? And the question is, which one of these compounds is more acidic? Which one is going to be easier for the hydrogen to fall off? This one on the right or this one on the left, okay? And we're going to prove that one of these is more acidic because of resonance. Okay, so remember you guys, we're gonna be looking at the stability of the conjugate base to determine which of these is more acidic. So let's go ahead and draw out their conjugate bases. This guy's gonna be CH3, CH2, 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 O with the minus charge on it, right? Compared to this guy, who's gonna have a conjugate base of CH3, CH2, CH2, C, double bond to an O, O minus, right you guys? So remember, you can't compare these based on size because, hey, the atom directly connected to the hydrogen, they're both oxygens, they're both the same size, okay? So you can't say one is bigger, so it's gonna be uh, more acidic. What this really boils down to is resonance, okay? If you, look at this, if, this, if you look at this conjugate base right here, do you see any plausible resonance structures for this guy? No, right, you guys remember for resonance structures, this is talking about moving electrons from one location to the next, okay? But hey, you can't move any types of electrons, you can only move electrons that are in lone pairs or in multiple bonds, right, in pi bonds, right? Does this guy have any, have any electrons that are in lone pairs or pi bonds? Well, yeah, he does have electrons that are in lone pairs, right? But hey, he can't move these anywhere because if he moves it to the left, guess what, that violates the octet rule here because it would put more than eight electrons on this carbon, okay? So there is no plausible resonance structure for this guy. But what about this guy right here? Is there any resonance structures for this? Well, check it out. You've got lone pairs and you've got multiple bonds. So check out what you can do. You can have this oxygen kick the electrons to form a double bond there, and then kick these electrons up to this oxygen here, giving you a resonance structure for this guy, which looks like this, CH2, CH2, C, now this oxygen is gonna get the minus charge on it, that's a minus charge, and now you're gonna form, have formed a double bond to this oxygen here, okay? And don't forget, here, let me draw resonance brackets for this. Sorry, it's like vertically this time, usually we draw this horizontally next to each other, but I didn't have room on the board, okay? But hey, take home message, you guys, what we're looking at right here is the stability of these conjugate bases, okay? Which one is, has a more stable conjugate base, this one or this one? Well, if we look, this guy has two resonance structures. This guy only has one, okay? Or this guy has one structure, this guy has two resonance structures. So, hey, the more resonance structures you have, the more or less stable you are, the more stable you are. So, hey, two is more than one, so this is gonna be more stable than this, so this acid is going to be more acidic than this acid, okay? And that's how resonance works. The more resonance structures your conjugate base can make, the more stable it is, okay?
All right, so now you're finally ready to start predicting which side of the reaction is going to be favored in an acid-base reaction. Because now you know how to predict which is going to be the stronger acid and which one's going to be the weaker acid. And the reaction always favors the side with the weaker acid, okay? And you can determine this by looking at the five stabilizing factors. The more stable the conjugate base, the more acidic the acid, okay? So hey, let me go ahead and put up a uh, equilibrium reaction here and, you can, and we can predict which side is going to be favored, okay? Okay, so here's the question, you guys. He's going to give you this equilibrium reaction up here, and he's going to say, okay, predict which way equilibrium is favored, to the left or to the right, okay? And we all know how to do this because, hey, the reaction favors the side with the weaker acid. So all you have to do is find out which side has the stronger acid, which side has the weaker acid, and point in the direction of the side that has the weaker acid, right? So in this problem, you're going to be looking at the two acids on the sides of the equation, right? So hey, here's one acid right here, here's the other acid right here, and the question is, which one's stronger and which one's weaker, okay? And I actually put this up as an example of inductive effects, okay? Because hey, the only difference between these two acids, this one and this one, is that one acid has fluorine and the other one has chlorine. So hey, you guys, in inductive effects, the hydrogen isn't directly connected to the atoms that we're comparing, right? So what we're looking at is how electronegative these atoms are. Which one's more electronegative, chlorine or fluorine? And fluorine is obviously more electronegative because, hey, it's the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. So we know that fluorine is pulling electrons away from this hydrogen twice as hard as chlorine is pulling electrons away from that hydrogen, making this with the fluorine the stronger acid this will be the stronger acid, making this one with the chlorine the weaker acid. So hey, after you determine that, all you, all you have to do now is say, okay, it is going to be favored to the right, the side with the weaker acid, okay? Okay, so really you guys, this is just another way of asking you this question. So he can just give you two acids, like say for example CH2, CH2, OH, stick a fluorine on this guy, compare this to CH2, CH2, OH with the chlorine on it, and asking you which one of these is the stronger acid, which one's the weaker acid, okay? Two ways of asking you the exact same thing. This way is easier because all you have to do is circle one and say, hey, this one's stronger, hey, this one's weaker. This one requires you to put a little bit more together in your head because you not only have to find which one's stronger, which one's weaker, you also have to remember that in an acid-base equilibrium reaction, the side with the weaker acid is favored. So, hey, really, two questions, just testing your knowledge if you know which one is going to be the stronger acid, which one's going to be the weaker acid, okay?